For more great content, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Showstopper. I'm Ying Su, your host, and I'm joined by my co-host this week, Tyler. Now, Tyler, we've had some uh, guests from all over the world over the last few weeks, but I'm super excited about the guest we have for today, and I cannot wait for him to uh, join, me, uh, join me in roasting NA. Oh, yes, Ying Su. Well, we've had some really great players just down the pipeline the last few weeks. We've had SK Rossi, we've had Dubstep, and now we have to bring on someone who might be better than all when it comes to playing the Jet and the Duelist role. We have the finalist from Masters Reykjavik, the prodigy himself, Durka has joined us today to shit on NA with us and to make me feel bad. So <laughs> welcome, Durka. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Great to, uh, great to have you here, Durka. And now we're going to start off with the Roast My Tier list as usual. And me yeah. and Tyler have uh, done a tier list of all of the teams mm -hmm. going to champions. And we're going to show them to you and you can tell us your thoughts. Uh, so this is my tier list for champions. Now, uh, I'm going to explain okay. myself okay. quickly. I'm going to explain myself quickly. Um, I think... Well, okay, I made mm. this list before Red Bull Home Ground, yeah. and I also mm -hmm. think we should take Red Bull Home Ground like with a pinch of salt. Mm. I don't think we should read too much into Red Bull Home Ground, uh, but I do think Gambit will probably still be the strongest team, the defending champions. I think when they gonna when they're gonna be on land, they're gonna be super, super, super strong, and I think all of the NAE EMEA teams are kind of you know on the next step below them. I think they can all win it. Anybody in this tier can win it. Team Secret and Crew are kind of my dark horses. Um, and then I think APAC have done super well, uh, given how well uh, Paper Rex played. I thought Paper Rex <clears> were amazing. And then D tier for me is just the teams I feel like, are, I feel like are unlikely they're going to win it. And I think they're slightly below in terms of like strength than the other ones. But yeah, what do you think, Durka? Uh, well, I already respect for Gambit on top. Mm because they're like my Russian brothers. So <laughs> I already like feel the energy, but then I'm like, uh, I don't know, I always feel it's weird that there's like a lot of teams on like second section, like A. So oh, like, you think I have too many on A? Yeah, I'm like, there's not gonna be like, how much there's teams? There's not gonna be like seven teams in in the semi-finals, so... <laughs> yeah. A few of those okay, people but, are going to choke yeah, their asses like, off. Yeah, yeah, but okay, who would you remove from A tier then? Uh, who do you think doesn't belong there? You see? It's hard! <laughs> I, I don't know, like, anywhere in the finals, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think Team Liquid should be there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fine, just leave it there. This is what uh, I mean. Like, who do you move uh, out of A? Who do you move out? Do you move out Vision Strikers? No, I think you move Fnatic to S. I think that's oh, what you okay. move. <laughs> okay. And then, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's Cloud9 no maybe to B, even though I like Cloud9. Cloud9 Cloud Blues. They're, they're going to be scary. I think that team's going to be very scary yeah, no, champions. They're fucking scary. Okay, uh, but what about the rest of my list? What, what uh, do you think of, you know, like my lower tiers? I don't know about Secret. I have never seen them play. Mm. I'm excited about Kree because when they got the new player, it was it Kesnit or? Yeah, Kesnit, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, yeah, 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 like it, it became insane. And then with C, I agree. I will maybe even put Vivo, I will put actual Vivo Kit on B mm. and then I will agree Ooh. with your, this list. Yeah. Because he's, oh, he's goaded. was an atrocious yeah. list. All right, well, I'll show you Tyler's list and you can uh, tell me what you thought of Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Let me explain this to you, list very quickly. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So, obviously, Gambit's in the S, the number one spot in S tier. It just has to be. Yeah. And V in, in Sentinels. I still believe in Sentinels. I feel like it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how they perform in Berlin for champions because either they're going to rebound and go back to the form that made them the best team in the world a few months ago, or we're going to see that maybe the Reykjavik was them peaking. And well, it's, it's, I still, I'm on the side of them bouncing back, but I think you can have a debate on that, right? Cause they did have a pretty shoddy, 
uh, uh, Berlin. And I think they would agree with that, especially after we see G2 fall in LCQ. We saw F4Q get kind of walloped in the uh, LCQ in uh, Asia. So it's not even like they were being pushed by, you know, these top teams who made the champions are the only ones left. Uh, I think Cloud9 Blue have a lot of potential. They might not have the most potential of all the NA teams, in my opinion. Uh, I think the team with Vandy and I think Leaf and Zeppa could be the scariest duels duo in the world. I think Zeppa in particular showed that like he's improving really fast and he was already seen as this prodigy in CSGO and it took him a bit of time to really develop a role and kind of cadence to Valor, but he's kind of finally starting to pick it up. I think... I really do think there's a gap between the top eight teams, so the three EM, uh, the three NA, four MEA, and Vision Strikers, and then everyone else. I think Crew is kind of the closest between uh, the two kind of big gaps, but I don't think anyone's proven that they are at the level of a Vision Strikers plus West, uh, the, the the big eight, you you know, so to speak, of champions yet, because uh, it just Brazil has three spots, and they have a lot of good players. I think uh, Saucy, uh, we're going to see MW Zira for the first time uh, as he's standing mm-hmm. in. Uh, we're going to see Furia come in, and we have Heat and uh, Merez, who you know were explosive in Berlin. But I just think on a team-by-team level, there is still a very big gap between the West plus Vision Strikers and then everyone else. And uh, I think there might be upsets, but I think if, if, they're, if it's very similar to Berlin and we have – uh, the, if if we don't put three of the <clears throat> top S and A teams in the same group, I think all eight of these teams would qualify over the bottom eight teams. I don't think there'd be any surprises, in my opinion. I yeah, I think so too. Actually, Daka, you've played against the Brazilians. I don't know if you scrimmed against them when they mm. came over for, to Berlin. Um, what do you make of them as a region and their teams? We scrimmed against we were kids, mm. I think. Is team Heat is in yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, was it? yeah. 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 We screamed versus them. Uh, I don't know. It, it wasn't anything special that yeah. people actually expected. So uh, I, I just feel like Crew is like on top mm. on the, their like region, like Latin Brazil. Yeah. And then I don't know about Furia or like Vikings, but I, I would actually put now Vivo Kit on like B too because of the MW0. I don't know, like, uh, again, anything about Secret or any other teams much. I don't know what's happening with Crazy Raccoon. I don't know what team is full sense. Uh, like, I, <laughs> like, I don't give a f- about any <laughs> other teams besides the ones that I no, feel like that could beat us. I'm not, like, disrespecting. <laughs> no. Like, but, uh, it's no, no, like, no, no, no. I think it's completely nah, fair, uh, though. Uh, yeah. Do you know what? I, I just had to search up the logo and... Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. So I'm like, I love uh, this. I never wa- like watch them or like play <laughs> first them, so I cannot say. Okay, like, well, or I- they weren't in Brazil, uh, Berlin, or Iceland, so I, I, yeah. I can't really yeah. say because they might just go and. Yeah. How, like, how do you rank X10? Non- like, X10 has yeah. Patapon, but Patapon's reportedly going back to Overwatch League after Champion, so it's like. I don't even know how the, Yeah, you know. yeah. I, I read that on Twitter, but you, uh, you've played against him, so what did you think yeah. of them? I think Patty Pan was one of the hardest duelists to play against. Mm. Ah. Like, that was for me, uh, like in Reykjavik. So I would actually put the X10 back, back on B. Mm. They. Ah, uh, yeah, Patty Pan had a break. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, Berlin. So I think, like, I think they will surprise like mm. a lot of people. Then again, about like S or A tier, I can't complain much. Like I feel like they're reasonable. I, I just, I don't know. Maybe I will put to. Nah, no, no, no. Well, well, well let's make fun. your list. Let's make your list yeah. so we know exactly I'll what you it. think. Um, you can just tell us, and we'll and we'll and we'll move it for you. But um, we'll, we'll start with the okay. bottom tier. Do you want to start with the bottom or do you want to start at top? Uh, you want to go S first? Yeah, let's go S first. Okay. Who are you putting in S? Uh, us, Fnatic. Yeah. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if you want to win, you have to believe it. So. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then I, I will put the Gambit 
uh, with us on the S. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, I'm a little bit biased because they're like my Russian broskis and I have played versus them and with some of them, like some other games. And it's actually like very fun and humble guys. Mm-hmm. So then, oh, it's hard. Then I will put Envy on S. I think they were really oh. good. I want to play. I want to play against the A two, yeah. and then it's instantly like A tier is instantly like again Sentinel, Liquid, Cloud Nine, Blue, uh, Ace, and is very good too. Uh, like uh, that's my like Finnish uh, player too. Mm. Uh, same as in Liquid. Then of course Vision Strikers too. Actually, uh, Ye, we had Ye on the episode and he said that yeah, he wants to play against you because yeah, they yeah. scrimmed you and you were annoying to play against and he yeah, wants to see... That yeah. scream was so fun. That <laughs> oh, what happened? Annoying. So basically, uh, this round I am 1v4 and I clutch it and then Mystic types in the chat, like all chat, because uh, like he types El Chapo, just because like... <laughs> Yay is El Diablo. Oh. And, then, <laughs> and then next round, Yay is ascent. Yay rushes B main and he gets 5 1 taps. And they <laughs> and they all just write in the chat El Diablo. Oh. And like, Fuck it. I like that the band is there, you know? The band yeah, is yeah. there. Do, okay. do you think if you do play against the MV on stage, are you going to give it? Are you going to stand off in a. Yeah, and... yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We like to do that. Um, are, are there any teams that you wouldn't give it against, or would you give it against every team? Uh, not to Gambit. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Also, maybe if Shaders, maybe if Shaders stands up, then I will too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe yeah, we I... pay back to Sentinel. Mm. Like, oh like, God! If like that happens, want, that will if... be fun. Uh, but yeah, and then. Okay, what were the other teams? Uh, would you put Vision Strikers in A as well? Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay, so you've got Crew, Secret, Vivo, Keyed, Vikings, Crazy Raccoon, Four Sense, Furia, and X10 left. Okay. Uh, I will put Vikings and Four Sense to D mm-hmm. because I actually know nothing about them. Like, and mm-hmm. they might surprise, they might like actually get into players that semifinals from now. So I think everyone is like, uh, everyone can win in this, in this tournament, I believe, like if they are in here, like it's hard path to come through. So mm-hmm. uh, then what do we have? Uh, I will put Crazy Raccoon. Uh, Crazy Raccoon, Furia, and Team Secret to C, and then Crew, Vivo Kid, and X10 to B. That's oh, my okay, thing. so you put Four Sons and Vikings in D? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay, so it's not too different actually no. from your list, Tyler. No, yeah. I, think yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely think there's a definite. Like, I think that the big question for, for me going to uh, Champions is can brazil earn their spots right like mm-hmm. they have three seeds two guaranteed one kind of a, not a gimme but a simpler qualification through brazil versus latam they have three seed they've won i believe three or four matches overall in two tournaments where emea and na both have won 10 plus matches and they're they're considered very equal in terms of of strength in terms of spots and if Brazil doesn't get at least one team deep in this tournament, I I don't know how you can give them the same amount of uh, seed going into 2022. I think EMEA yeah. or NA would deserve that extra seed over Brazil. And I think it's up to Furia, Vivo Keed, and Vikings to prove everyone wrong, right? And I think the first two tournaments have been very disappointing and kind of killed the hype because f- five, six months ago, you had people like Wyatt of Plat Chat and Sideshow talking about like, Vikings could win Reykjavik. And now it's like, can Vikings even win a game at champion? So I want to see Brazil step up. I really want to see the region have a good tournament and prove that they deserve to be on the same tier, or at least in the same discussion as NA and EMEA. In fairness, if Crew do well again, yeah. I I wouldn't be opposing giving Latam yeah. uh, a spot. Take it from Brazil. Yeah, take it from Brazil. Yeah, I think... Yeah. 
That could be quite yeah. poetic. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is it for Bruce, my tier list. We're going to move on to the second segment. We're going to talk about champions. But before we talk about champions, Durka, uh, I do want to ask you about Berlin Masters. Obviously, you guys missed out. And when I spoke to Mixwell in Berlin about missing out on Iceland, he said it was super hard. Like he couldn't even watch the tournament. It, it was really difficult for him to deal with. Uh, how did you find the experience of having to watch it at home? But also, you know, towards the the end when like your champion's fate was in the hands of your uh, Russian broskies? Uh, well, it, it was kind of hard it, ever since we didn't qualify even to EMA, like in after Poland, like he, you re realize like each day, uh, sometimes more and more. And when it comes to close to Berlin, you're like, we're like we're not gonna play we will have to watch and then when tournament begins and we have to actually like watch the games and see what happens people are hyped about it it's kind of sad that you kind of missed out and didn't play the tournament and kind of it just like it was difficult for me and then there was like so, uh, some games we watched because like there was were a couple of games that if Gambit loses, we will insta qualify. If Ascend loses, we will insta qualify. And we after that, we don't even need to think about like oh, we need the EMA team to win final. Like there there were, were multiple scenarios like that. And then in the playoffs, it's kind of like each day it's just harder because you like think oh they need to win this, they need to do that, and then. I was really hyped and happy for Gambit because I feel like they really earned that, earned it, and because I've played I played versus them a year ago in CIS, mm -hmm. and it was like always nice battle with them, and we fought for the Iceland spot versus them, and we won, so they kind of missed out on that. So I was kind of like uh, fanboying them. Like after some games, I was like writing to them in VK. It's like Russian social media, like writing congrats, go next and things like that. But like in finals at some point when it was like 1-0 already, I, I felt really confident that like Gambit is going to win it. But like, you know, I, I had like still feeling in my, I don't know, head that like, we will still want to play in the finals, like or like even even though Gambit is winning us a slot for champions, it's, it will be still nice to do it like by ourselves mm. instead of like relying on someone to do that. It's just like hard. Is it a weird thing? Because I know how much you love the game, how much you want to play, and like you said, earn the spot. Um, so, so it must have been like a bittersweet moment that, like, yay, we're going to champions, but then, like, oh, we didn't actually make it ourselves. Was that a, a weird feeling? Uh, it's not like we didn't make it ourselves. We qualified for Iceland mm -hmm. and we earned our points there. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's not like random. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's True. not like, oh, Gambit carried us. We, we actually got to finals. We got a lot of points. Uh, but like, if we won't qualify to EMA, it will be like such a higher chance that we will qualify. Or we, if we will qualify to Berlin, we will insta qualify and then we don't need to think about it. And because we had to rely on someone, it's just hard. Like, I don't say we didn't earn it. Mm -hmm. uh, but like it's it's still hard to watch. Yeah, just kind of moving on from missing, uh, you know, Masters Berlin. How much do you think the competition is going to change in terms of strength and just scope going from Reykjavik to Champions? Do you think it, there's going to be anything similar? Or do you feel like it's going to be a whole new ball game once Fnatic goes to Berlin for champs? Well, we got our new like coach analysts. We got performance coach, like more staff, and it's uh, really nice. We're like we have new new approach to like training and uh, doing stuff. So it is like actually very like exciting, and I feel like we improve. Even though like we we lost a who gives so, like no one cares like about us we, we were like okay now we have like 
time to focus on champions. We don't need to think about Red Bull. We don't need to do that. Okay, so uh, like, of course, like we tested some things out that we might bring into champions. Maybe not. Uh, like, I'm not using it as a, any excuse. Like, literally, I don't even care. Uh, <laughs> like, it was so Finnish. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but like, I'm just excited for the champions because I feel like I'm slowly getting into my form back, which I had in Iceland, and I feel like I'm getting even better than that. So I'm just like excited, but like we have this this new thing that each one in our team can pop off. Like it's not only like a couple individuals, like maybe in Iceland, but like each one like everyone improved so much since that like mechanically and even like in the head it's like so nice to see uh, or like who watch some moments back and like realize that uh, but do you think your competition is going to get harder like do you think the teams other teams are also better now compared to iceland yeah M- more teams more teams more ema teams more na teams some other teams and like i feel like everyone got better and it's not like Iceland or Berlin that some of the best teammates could not qualify uh, not teammates teams uh, just like it's like actually the best teams like top 16 teams in, in the world so mm. of course competition is going to be higher uh, that's going to be really exciting to see but the other exciting thing is that Everybody got better at jet. It feels like, you know, in the beginning, we had a couple of really notable jet players, uh, but now going to champions every team at this point, like you need to have a really, really standout jet. So how do you think your jet is going to be different to other jets we're going to see at champions? I think in Iceland, I had the most aggressive jet ever, but now Kellogg's beat it, so... (laughs) <laughs> I can't do it now uh, I'll, I might try most passive jet <laughs> <laughs> if I will earn the title but yeah uh, it, it's like I, I never felt like I'm worse a jet than anybody I, I always felt like I'm doing thing, some things differently and it's not only like opening going for the frags it's also like making space dashing in the smokes and like you're seeing stuff and or like you making space for my teammates even more now and i feel like i did a lot of like small or huge mistakes that cost us around like over peaking going too fast in iceland now i think i'm like more uh like chill on that and like the thinking more about stuff or not doing same mistakes uh, with also like I know more now when to be aggressive when to be passive when to hit that what to do then and when I see like other Jets play even in Berlin I was like some people don't do that mm-hmm. so it's like you can have multiple Jets in the tournament but I don't think even half of them are like ne- nearly the same like he, even Scream like when he plays some maps on jet, mm. he doesn't even take it up as much. He just plays rifle, mm. and that's not a bad thing. It's like just another way to play jet. Mm. And like some people play only up with jet, or like do do stuff. It's just like interesting. Like uh, I cannot like say, oh, I'm better than him when the guy doesn't even play like me. Mm. That's interesting. But we'll see who you beat. Mm. We'll see which which jets you're going to be taking. Yeah, on. yeah I think. I mean, I think in today we've kind of seen that kind of develop as well. Where Leaf uh, from C9 Blue is much more of a rifling kind of jet. Where uh, if you look at Yay, Yay is very similar to CNED over in EMEA, where he has the op in his hands almost like like forty percent of the time uh, in the game. And then you have Tens, who's kind of mixed between both, where he can rifle, but also relies on the operator as well. So I do think there's a lot of different jets going into uh, yeah. Berlin, so it should be really exciting. But talking about being chill, right, this new chill Durka, does that does that carry over to your rivalry of Sentinels? Do you have uh, revenge on the mind? Do you care? If you get a match against them in the group stage, will that match feel bigger than the other ones, or are you just going to take them as every other team in the tournament? Uh, with Sentinels, like, of course we want that payback win or, like, to show, okay, 
uh, like uh, like we're better like uh, or just win them it was already be awesome like we, we wanted payback we like really want to win them especially we, we just want to win the tourney like in the end even if you don't get to play them we, we won't be sad we, we we are just gonna play other teams and like uh me uh, uh i have that opinion that i want to play as much teams as possible like i don't even care which teams i just want to play as much as possible because i feel like i, I get better from that and like it's still nice experience okay if we if it does like na or ema that we are gonna play brazil because we never played against brazil or we're gonna play other regions too it's all always fun like in players so of course we have to be, uh, like uh, beat other teams and yeah so uh, well, watching them. watching them in Berlin because you played against them already twice, uh, and watching them in Berlin, what do you think went wrong for them? There might be a lot of reasons, like within the team or something. There might be like that players might have felt, oh, this is easy, or like in like those prac room situation that that they had that their discs were shit and they actually were, or like. Is somebody didn't want to play and it, it, like a lot of things can st stack up to that it's like you have to ignore those things before like the tournament begins and just focus on the tournament but like saying about sentinels i don't actually know because it might be that they took it a little too easy or like uh people started reading them more or like people prepare for them more it's like multiple reasons what can happen and i don't think we really would know and i don't really know and i don't like to say oh they just became shit because <laughs> it is it's not true i think they're still mm. a good team and if yeah. if you think if you think you'd made berlin do you think you would have beaten them yeah why <laughs> i don't know i'm not gonna say scream results but i think again like or approach the game and roles even like in berlin time felt good and then uh we really had like a, a strong mentality and i think we got to know sentinels a bit better mm. and like uh i got like I was playing in the Berlin time ranks and everything, so I felt like I was even better because I I just grind Valorant a lot. Like I didn't stop playing, I didn't have to play any tournaments, so I was just chilling and watching Berlin after. And I, like I, I do want to ask about the scrim results real quick because I felt like. Did you, did you guys scrim them? Like how did it go? Like I, yeah, it, once, it sounds like you're well, really confident. Once. Yeah. We beat them, but it's again, at that time, it was our best map. I had a live game. Uh, someone else from our team had a live game. Uh, we had really cool tricks. I, I feel like I just like, uh, I like that I was in good positions at a good time, that mm -hmm. everything clicked, kind of. I think it counts as your revenge. A yeah. small revenge. Small yeah. revenge, yeah. Sue. That doesn't yeah. count for everything. It's, but it's a good story. It felt nice. It felt <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. So it felt nice after beating them in Scream. But again, it's a Scream. It's not a tournament. So Okay. Yeah, true. Yeah. You got you to gotta do it on stage. You got to do it on stage. Uh, yeah. If that will be on stage, I will be satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, kind of talking from that, it's, our final question in this segment is, it's a question I think a lot of people are asking, especially after an ALCQ where it was supposed to be on LAN, but not really LAN, but kind of on LAN because they're at least facing each other to being an online tournament. Is the LAN buff real? Is there a buff to people who can play on LAN better than others? Is there a buff or do you think that people overestimate or over, overstate the LAN, the online to LAN uh, differences? Uh, I wouldn't call it a buff. I think it's a thing you get used to. It's like, 
I think everyone is going to play at LAN better than at home. But then when you play more LANs in general, like you're in LANs every month or something like that, when you're at home, you won't have the same feeling. You won't have teammates next to you. You're not going to be as focused. You might have phone on your desk. You might have someone distracting you. And uh, basically... When you get back to LAN, you again get that feeling, oh, I'm back. And then you just might play out of your mind. You have teammates close to you. You can feast bomb. You can yell. You can do whatever. You don't even have neighbors anymore. So you don't have to think about <laughs> noise complaints. I don't have my parents like uh, next room. So I don't have to care. Like I can just scream. <laughs> and like do stuff just be in the game more it's just like you you're just in the game more i, I wouldn't call it a buff some people just perform be- better because of the feeling i think you're definitely one of those people like i've seen you i've interacted with you in real life i think you do yeah. not get affected by that kind of stuff uh yeah. but uh, let's move on to our last segment the bit of the cooldown. now um boaster has spoken in the past that his cs career largely ended because of zywu he lost really badly to zywu in the in his final oh. csgo match and i know that you had a similar experience but it was again simple um and simple just won the major so how does that uh, how does that feel what do you make of that uh, I was playing in Kova, so like in CS, we had we just got that top uh, top prag group. We started pracking versus top like uh, teams, uh, uh, and I won't say like simple ended my career, but like it just like felt different against playing versus them. I like even though I was like in tier two, tier three team. And I played against tier one. I never felt more uncomfortable than playing against simple. I will say it's like simple and Zaibu are the two ones, because one of the my one of my first like actual tournaments, I got like instantly bashed by Zaibu. But then like in practice, I just felt like simply just better. And you, you sometimes like something happens, and you're like, what the, uh, and then. <laughs> And then, like, he gets, like, three kills in one second, and then your teammates on the other side asks you what happened. And, like, you just say, it's simple. <laughs> so, like, Would you like to see him move to Valorant? Because, obviously, he's not moving. There was, like, loads of whispers about him moving. But do you think uh, it would benefit the game if he did move? Mm, benefit the game, yeah. But it's, like... Does he like the game? Is the most question because I wa- I watched his gameplay. Like he really, I feel like he understands the game, even though like he gets confused with the abilities. Like he plays really well, even in Valorant, and it's actually interesting. But I I don't think he might be type of the guy who likes abilities because sometimes there's moments you cannot do anything just because it's an ability while in cs like if you have a good team play you're a good individual you can just like own everybody and you don't have to think about like throwing birds uh, <laughs> ray guns everywhere yeah. some the grab of like, the grab well yeah, getting yeah, sucked <laughs> flashes through the walls like you, you don't yeah. have to think about that my question off of this one would be if let's say he's not going to switch neither him or Zai were going to switch but let's say in a in a magical world like let's say carlos just gives them both like 50 million dollars each and says come over to g2 valor <laughs> Do you think in six months' time, either of those two would be the best in the world? Or do you think it would take much more time for them to catch up? Or do you think they're just so talented enough that they would brute force their way to the number one spot? Mm, I think their like, work ethic is good. And the way they play, it's like they, they kind of always know what to do and how to do, how to improve. So, and like, past experience will definitely help them and they will be like maybe the best like or one of the best like easily i, I would say like guaranteed that's like my opinion 
Yeah, I'm with you. I think they would definitely if give them a little bit of time. Um, but for you, um, before Fnatic, you know, you were, uh, I think people knew you because you were just ridiculous stats. You were putting up like insane numbers in CIS. You were uh, winning some of the tournaments there. But how has joining Fnatic, you know, changed your life, um, you know, ever since moving away from CIS? Basically, like, I'm just going to say a little bit of a story. Like, I, I wanted to play in a Finnish team when I came mm -hmm. to Valorant, but there's no Finnish players at all. So I was like, no. Then I went to play in a couple of like e uh, English speaking stacks and uh, like it was confusing for me. And I was like, uh, I'll, I'll just rather go try like Russian. Maybe it will be easier. And then I got with my friend Hoya into a team, into Crow crowd basically. It was like me and Hoya played matchmaking. We, we see uh, some like three stack and we like, oh, let's go play together a ranked. And then, oh, there's like ni nice characters tournament tomorrow. Let's go play that. And then we win like actual teams and we're like, oh, let's make a team. Let's go. But like journey with them was really nice and speaking Russian with them was really nice because I've never spoken Russian in a team before. And I think I learned a lot of, from them. Like it was, it was so easy to form CIS. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like if you know Russian, just just go form CIS. I I, I don't think people grind there, so I, I will do that because you can maybe get high stats like me and then just get like trial. <laughs> Uh, with some team like mm -hmm. why not but like it was actually easy and i think a lot of even the russian players will confirm that but, like when i joined fnatic of course like people started noticing me more uh, like uh, people started like watching me more uh, copying my place i saw that since day one and like I didn't take it much, as much in my mind. I was like, okay, I'm in Fnatic. Okay, I have now new tag, new or organization, new teammates, speaking English now again. <laughs> and then we just played. And like in four days, we started playing together. We, we just get into Iceland. We qualify <laughs> for that. And then it's like... <laughs> What can I say? It's like it's your new family. Like, <laughs> You're stuck now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never leaving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I do. Good. I do want to quickly ask about. You know, were you surprised when Fnatic? Like, I don't know if they message you or like Crow Crowd, whatever. Were you kind of just like, where were you when you heard the news? And how much of Fnatic as an org and these players did you know of? Like, did you know who Booster, Mystic, Magnum, and uh, Doma were? <laughs> I knew who Boaster was. I knew who Magnum was because I played against Magnum. Of course, I bashed him. Uh, <laughs> she can't, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of exciting. Uh, like, I, I didn't know Boaster personally. I just watched like a couple streams. And then when we trialed, it, it seemed very nice. Like, uh, everyone in the team seemed nice. And like all clicked together and we were like uh, really enjoying it. And like, yeah, I, I was really like, uh, I won't say like family, but uh, I've never been to a team like this. Like, it's just like, we bonded much together and it, it feels like re really f like nice friends. I, and I think like, with crowd crowd if i speak now with one or two people like while i'm now here and not even much like uh, i think like in from this team like if we of course we're not going to play in the same team forever and like for 10 years uh, but like i still will feel like i will be friends with most of them and like uh, talk with them. So th that's actually a nice experience. Oh, that's so wholesome. And just really quickly before I let uh, Tyler ask his question is, I heard that you only really had one trial and you dropped like 
30 kills left and they were like okay he's joining <laughs> is that true is that what happened yeah so <laughs> i got told by koja that i have two maps uh at that time and it was like i play soba on the first map and on second i play jet so we go soba haven I think I dropped 30. I'm like, okay, I, I didn't even know lineups. <laughs> Good trial. Like, I actually looked up at some lineups, but they weren't like perfect or anything like a real solo will do. And then uh, I, uh, what I got told that after the first map, they will take me already. But then, but then we played icebox jet and i dropped like 40 <laughs> and we're the same all opponents and i'm like okay i, I think i nailed it i go I say, bye guys have a nice day <laughs> next day i i got told uh, i was like okay uh, like i'm getting told okay we're trying to negotiate with like crow crowd now i'm like cool nice <laughs> Like, uh, that was my experience with, like, next day, again, I'm playing with Crow Crowd versus the same team in the prax, and I cannot even drop 20. So. <laughs> That's got to be the greatest trial yeah. of all time, yeah. Tyler. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, to end off this episode, I think the one thing for people who didn't know you beforehand, who've watched this, you know, the last 40, 45 minutes is that you're a very cool, calm, and collected. We've had a lot of people on the show, some of the best players in the world, including yourself, and some of them are introverted. Some of them are extroverted. I think you definitely have a very mature, very just chill side of yourself. And how how did that develop? Why? What kind of spurned you to have, or, or you know, kind of pulled you to have such a you know a chill, cool personality? And how do you keep such a mature head? You're so young. You know, you've you've been given, you've been heaped so much praise already. How do you keep humble in these times? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you're 18, Doma just mm. turned 18, but you're so like, Doma's yeah. this like excited 18 year old, everything's like new and great. Whereas like Tyler said, you're very much like just grounded, oh. you're mature, you want to grind and you just want to win. So yeah, I echo Tyler's question. How do you kind of stay that way? Yeah, so yeah, sometimes living with Doma, I have to check my ID sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> actually 18 or not uh, but I don't know it's kind of how my parents raised me how I was talking with my brothers and I'm kind of more introverted and shy but like I'm trying uh, I'm actually trying my best to like kind of get out from that and try to be like more uh, not, not awkward and try to talk more basically and then like it's just like speaking to people growing up and then knowing uh, the situations in well like in csgo when i left like uh, i still was like this but like i left and i i, I kind of felt sad at one point after leaving and i was like okay i still want want to have proper break at least till like new year but then uh my brother was like oh let's go play valorant a couple of ranks and here i am uh, so um like right now i'm like okay i was playing csgo but that's in the past uh but like i don't want to basically i don't want to make Valorant my past yet because I played CSGO for, for like one or two years uh, with like small contract not even in one of the best teams uh, only like in Finland maybe but like I still don't want to make it past I, I want to make the mo most out of it I know how things work and I, I know how to process some things I, I'm trying to be like more calm things about uh, think about things more and like uh, personally like uh some people who are at my age they like to do stuff they like ha to hang out have fun but like when i i don't see the fun i'm 
I'm just chilling because uh, <laughs> I, I just I just like to play games or like chill or spend my own time like I want to. If I will have some some small thing that I even enjoy a little bit, I will do that. I'm not searching for like big adventures and. Uh, basically that's how uh, I've grown up for me I love that it's it's such a contrast like uh, a lot of people your age would be like oh I have money now I'm gonna spend it on this that I'm gonna go out I'm gonna like you know go drinking all this stuff but you're just like meh I'm, I'm quite happy just doing things that I like to do. Um, I think it's difficult not to get peer pressured, right? Like into, like being forced into doing things you don't. Um, so I'm going to really quickly round this off um, because like you said, you don't want Valorant to be your past. You know, you, yeah. CSGO is already part of your past. So where do you see yourself in Valorant in 10 years? When you're Boaster's age, when you're 28, he's nearly, he's 26. He's nearly 28. So uh, where would you like to see yourself then? I still want to play, I think. It's not like... It's not like, uh, oh, I want to be coach in 10 years. or like uh, I still want to play as much as I can. If, I, if Of course, I will enjoy it and like, like the game, have passion and like just try my best because when I came into CS, there, there were like people like Get Right Forest, some like other pros, Zeus, who I, who I admire a lot and when you looked at, at their age you're like they're twice my age and then you're like they played the game before I was born and, <laughs> and I, 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 I kind of want the same thing I think that mm-hmm. I want to be as long as possible in the game uh, I'm not saying that like Oh, I have to do this and like be there. I, I'm, I'm not saying that maybe it will not be true, or I, I will win multiple champions and just go chill on some, I don't know, some other country. Uh, but I just want to play as much as I can, if if I will have passion about it, and just make a lo- long career for myself because then you're like more in the books than yeah. just like uh, winning couple trophies and going away. You're going to have to beat Jerax and Topson's uh, legacy, I feel like, uh, especially yeah. coming from Finland as well. But um, <laughs> that is all the time we have for today. Thank you, Dirk, so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you as well, Tyler. There wasn't enough shitting on NA, I feel. There was too much respect no, towards no. NA. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have to wait. I feel like we're still like like three or four weeks out, so it's going to have to ramp up yeah. as we get closer to the event. I think we're we're still, like, once groups come out, like once we start – once we see like who's the playing who, then that's when the shit come out. Uh, but yeah, thank you both for joining yeah. me. Uh, we're now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well, if, that, if that's where you guys want to listen to Showstopper. But for now, drop us a like if you enjoy the video and we'll see you next week. Bye.